So I wish I was here to tell you I got my Land Cruiser done and it's great or show you another video on the Esprit or how to fix something else but I'm here telling you that someone needs to take my Copart membership away. Uh, I have bought yet another project car. Now it's not a humongous project car and I, I say that it's not like another Land Cruiser with an LS swap but it's another car to work on and I'm going to probably have to sell one of the other cars that I've already finished, which makes no sense, but that's just the way my brain works. This is essentially like an alcoholic running a liquor store. Uh, Copart sells the cars I need to part out to sell parts to exist and to have money to fix my cars and buy more cars and projects. They also have more cars and project cars, which is something I don't need. It's like well, this is the situation I'm in. So regardless, I bought a car on Copart sight unseen. Now that is kind of a sketchy thing to say. I, I'm not here to talk anything negative about Copart because I've bought some amazing cars from Copart. My Silverado came from Copart. Uh, they have a lot to offer. So for those of you that don't know what Copart is, it's essentially an auction house for totaled, wrecked, and cars in that people don't want to sell retail. So you have a lot of insurance totals, that's the majority of cars there, and then there's also a lot of cars that dealers and shops they run, that, that can sell on Copart, they run through the auction based because they just want to get rid of it. It's got a mechanical problem, a blown engine, and Copart does their best to describe what's wrong with the car. Sometimes they catch it, oftentimes they don't. Uh, that's what you got to be careful about. A lot of cars like the crappy 330ci behind me with 98,000 miles uh it may appear to be wrecked and they may say front end in the actual listing but what is really wrong with it like this car is it has a blown head gasket so what likely happened is some shop got this car they fixed the front end and they're like ah oh, crap the engine's bad well let's just pull the bumper off and run it through the auction and cut our and you know try to recoup our losses and it's not a bad strategy except for the fact that you can't always go and check out a car and run it and drive it and make sure what's wrong with it or not now they do offer an inspection service which i did pay for on another car and it isn't as thorough as you hope it's not like a ppi on an expensive car where they run it and drive it down the road and check it for leaks and run it at operating temperature for an hour and check all the windows they don't do that they just take more pictures and give you notes on what they find and if the car actually does run or not so by definition copart's run and drive is that the car will start in any capacity it can have rod knock or it can run perfect and it will propel itself a certain amount of distance whether that means it only has first gear or it barely makes it across the parking lot that's a run and drive now it could run and drive just perfect and you can kind of surmise by the picture well yes that car has uh a car has been hit in the wheel that's why it's only engine start and it doesn't drive or that car should run and drive the wreck isn't that bad why does it not run and drive or why does it say mechanical on it so there's a whole lot of things to consider when you're buying a car from copart especially if it's something that you're trying to put back together or even to part out if you're buying a critical part that's often expensive or hard to find so let's talk about what i actually bought uh so i was actually on the hunt for an e46 m3 I don't need an E46 M3, I just wanted one. Uh, I've kind of liked those cars for a long time, but I have a couple very strict rules that made just going out and buying one uh, quite difficult. I was planning on replacing one of my E36s with it. Um, I can't own a silver car, I just can't do it. I don't want another convertible, I don't want a black car, so I don't want a gray interior, so it, it got really... It got it was very difficult to just go out and find one i also want to buy one cheap enough to where i could buy it own it for a while and sell it without a huge cost to myself maybe even make some money on it like i did on one of my other e36 m3s so i began looking everywhere on iaa on copart you know on craigslist on facebook marketplace and all the different facebook groups and cars would pop up and sell they were all over the country um, and I found the first interesting one was a Mystic Blue on cloth, black cloth uh, 05, which was just beautiful. It had some modifications. It was in, it was in Georgia. Uh, but then I did some digging. Now, if you're going to buy something that you want to keep for yourself and uh, you are kind of hesitant because you can't go look at it because it, say it's a Copart, uh, you kind of want to go and do some investigation, do some research. So 
Google the VIN number and then go, go under image search. It, a lot of times it'll pull up past auctions. So just as you would, uh, you know, have a PPI done on a 15 or $20,000 example of an M3 or something else, or go look at it and get underneath it if it's local, uh, you need to do your due diligence and you can only do so much. But one of the things you can do is that Google image search. Now, uh, I wish, Copart would let you see the previous auction number. That would kind of alleviate a lot of problems, but I can understand why they don't want to do that. So you can still find it if you dig. So I dug on that Mystic Blue car and I found that it was, a, I, it said flood history in the auction that I found. And then when I did my little, a little bit of research, I found the actual, the actual, the original listing. So what happened is the car was flooded and I saw the original pictures where there was a water line a third of the way up the door. Well, that's a little higher than I really want to deal with. I'll deal with a low level flood, wet carpets, not a big deal on those cars. Uh, but I was kind of turned off with the height of the water. So I stopped bidding on it. Um, but so what it ended up happening with that car is that someone took the front end apart and made it look like it was wrecked. So. Copart put the initial loss as front end and secondary as flood, you know, flood certificate. So it leads you to believe that it was a running driving car and it got in a front end collision. Well, they said it ran and drove and it could have run and drove. I, I really don't know. Um, but I, I bowed out because I didn't want something that was damaged that way. So I continued my search and something very special popped up. And as you can see, it's behind me. This is a 2002 Laguna Seca Blue on black six-speed coupe. Uh, a car that most people never get the chance to buy. Um, it's just a very sought after color. Uh, they, they, those car, these cars bring a lot more money. So to go out and buy one retail is pretty impossible. So obviously when this car popped up, I thought, oh, a Laguna Seca car, uh, why is it there? So I looked at the listing and here's what the listing looks like. As you can see, uh, the actual listing, sorry about my, my cat wanted me to buy it too. Uh, the actual listing uh, that I saw uh, showed it as front end damage and a grill was missing and the front bumper had some, some damage on the right front. But uh, it said it ran and drove 111,000 miles on it and the rest of the body looked really nice. Had a couple aftermarket things, but a lot of these cars do. So it looked like a pretty well taken care of car and that's what it looked like. So uh, I decided to do some more research on it. A couple things didn't seem right to me. Uh, the car looked way too nice to be at Copart. You'd think that a car like this, you would just go ahead and retail. You just go put it on a lot uh, I'd, or put it on Auto Trader or Marketplace and it would sell fast because these cars in this color sell very fast. A six speed, any E46 six speed coupe sells fast. So what, you know, I, something's wrong here. There's a question. So I started to do some more research. So I Google image search the VIN four or five different ways and I found pictures from IAI where the car was, that, a car that looks similar but it had different wheels on it and it had exhaust and an intake and suspension and I thought, well, that's, that's not the same car but why is my VIN pulling this up? So then I found uh, a previous Copart lot number and if you go on a Copart and you find a lot number, you can type in that lot number and it will pull up the previous auction. I think it goes back a year. It may go back even further. I'm not sure. But uh, I found a listing from uh, California and granted this car was in Georgia. This car was in Atlanta, Georgia. So I found a car that looked just like this, but it was a little different. It had, again, it had wheels and intake and some aftermarket parts and the right side wheels were pointed in different directions than they were supposed to be. The car was obviously wrecked. Uh, the front bumper had some damage, it had a splitter on it, uh, or a lip anyway. So I found that listing from September. Car was wrecked in California, clearly had suspension damage. Clearly that's why it's at the auction. Uh, and I thought, well, how did it get from California, which is kind of far from Georgia, it's quite expensive to tow, to Atlanta. So more research done. And this, has, this car has the craziest story. And I don't know all the details. And if you know something about this car, please let me know. Because it just, it, I still have some, some questions. I just don't get it. So this car was wrecked in California back in last summertime, end of summer. It went through Copart in September of 19 
and it had that right side damage again it looked like it had bent rear control arms um, it, the, it looked like the accident was hard enough where it shot the spring out of the driver's side and it was sitting like on the bump stops in the back the right front wheel had some damage uh, and it, the front bumper was pulled off of it it, it looked like it was wrecked. It was clearly like that's the first time it's at Copart. Now, I did find IAA pictures that made it look even worse, so there's even more questions here. But regardless, uh, I know that it was wrecked in California, and then a pl the place in Georgia bought it for $8,000. That's what the final bid was. So that's probably $8,700, 86, probably 8600 bucks with fees if you have the top tier membership, which is what most dealers and salvage dealers have. They paid for what I would anticipate to be a very expensive tow from California, a, a non-run and drive car from California all the way to Atlanta, Georgia, or somewhere close to that. And they fixed it. At, like they fixed it. They fixed all the suspension. They took all the modifications off. They took the intake off. They took the strut tower bar off. They took the aftermarket ex exhaust off. They took the coilovers off. They had uh, had uh, Anki NT03s on it. They took those off. Put all factory parts on. They added floor mats. They put the missing fan shroud back on. It, it was like okay, you're, this this car has been repaired, but they didn't fix the front end damage w like properly. Uh, it, it didn't look like it in the listing. So I thought, oh God, so this thing's got frame damage. Like why, why would you run this thing back through auction? So I thought, well, I'm going to bid it because I, I need to try. So I bid it. I did not win the initial auction. It went for $9,100. And they, I get a phone call the, like the next day from Copart saying, well, we've called like the top several bidders and the seller wants 10 for the car. He'll take that right now. The first person to agree to it. And I thought, well, I didn't even want to bid 91, so no. So I just ignored it. So I, I declined that and they ended up, everybody else did too. So they relisted the car, but they started it at $9,100. They did a, a night, it's called a nightcap sale. If you ever see like an NCS, they start at like six or seven o'clock at night. I, I, I can understand why they do it. So. I bid on it one time. I thought, what the hell? I bid $9,200 on it. And, you know, I don't want to miss out on a, on a Laguna Seca Blue Coupe for a hundred bucks. So uh, I bid 9,200 bucks thinking, well, they're not going to come down to that anyway. They wanted 10.5. It's kind of a, kind of a stretch, especially on this car. So I, uh, I won that auction and I thought, all right, let's see what they counter me at. So they countered at 12 and I laughed. Um, I thought about it some more and then I laughed again and I was like, no, we're, we're not doing that. So I clicked the keep current bid and they counted at 11.8 and then 11.6 and then 11. And I'm like, well, you already, like Copart already called me and said 10.5. So I'm not paying, I would not, I don't even want to pay 10.5. I'm definitely not going to pay more than 10.5. So no, not interested. So they restarted the whole auction the following Monday that like I wanted on a, I think it was a Thursday night that nightcap sale. And that following Monday, they, 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 Friday or Saturday, they started it, they added it to the, to Monday's sale in Atlanta or maybe, yeah, it was Monday. And, uh, they started it at like a normal car running it through the auction. So I bid up to $9,200 and the morning of the sale I checked and it was at $9,200 and I thought, well, someone's probably going to outbid me, but I'm just not going to spend any more money on it. Like I just can't do it. So I, uh, I won that auction too. Nobody bid on it. So I thought, okay, so if they're going to counter again. I was out of town at the time. So they counted all day between, they started at like 11 and then they went to 10, eight and then 10, six, which is still more than 10, five. It's like, what? Well, I understand what you're trying to do, but like, do you want to sell the car or do you want to run it through 50 times? Because some places want to run cars through and it's just kind of taking a stab in the dark. Sometimes it works, but typically it doesn't. So they call me the next day and they said, the seller wants 10, five. I said, I know that you've already called me once on it. The sale went for 92. It went for 9,100, then 9,200, then 9,200. That it seems like the market has determined that that's what the car is worth. So that's what I'm willing to pay. I'll pay. I'll pay market price. I'm not paying any more. She's like, well, would you come up to 10? No, I, I'm not coming up. I'm not doing it. So I finally agreed to come up a hundred dollars because again, I don't want to lose the Laguna Seca car for a hundred bucks, and I'm stubborn. So. 
Uh, she said, well, I'll, I'll see what the seller says, and if he agrees, or if they agree, then they will, uh, you'll see it, uh, you'll get a, an email about it. So about three hours later, I got an email saying that I won lot number, or my sealed bin, bid was high enough, and I about fell out of my chair. They, 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 they agreed. So here I am uh, with a, now, now I'm in this car, $10,053 with fees. It went for 9300 plus fees. Uh, so it's like you know 750 bucks in fees. And I thought, oh my God, I got so much money in an E46. I, I haven't even laid my eyes on. So you know it's a crapshoot. It always is a crapshoot. I did my due, due diligence and I called everybody. I called my buddy back in, up, my buddy up in Utah, and I said, all right, what's the deal here? Like, what's the worst case scenario? Prepare me for like just burning ten thousand dollars of cash. And he said, well. They could have put a five-speed manual in it and then a non-M rear subframe and diff. And that night I, I didn't sleep. I stared at the ceiling going, okay, something is really, something has to be wrong, like really wrong with this car. So at this point I'm kind of, I'm locked in. Like I, I have to buy it. I, so I went down to Copart and paid for it. And then I arranged transport through a friend of mine and which is 500 bucks to get it up here from Atlanta, which I don't think is that bad because you couldn't pay me $500 to tow a car from Atlanta to St. Louis. So this car finally shows up at the end of the day on Friday. And this is like the moment of truth. I mean, I had two sleepless nights. This is all I could really think about, which is dumb, but this is just how my brain is wired. I thought, oh, worst case, maybe it's got rod knock, it's got a torn rear chassis where the suffering bolt's in, and someone put a five-speed in it. And so I had all these thoughts through my head, you know, how, it could be really bad. It could be like I just got taken and I have no recourse. Like once the car leaves the lot from one of these places, you own it, whether it's what they told you it was or not. So the car comes in and it's beautiful. It's great. It's fantastic. I got so lucky, so lucky. Stay. So this, this thing is just like, I hear it run, I hear fire up on the truck and it runs perfect, like perfect. It's quiet, it doesn't smoke, it backs itself off the trailer. I get in it, I drive it through my parking lot. It has plenty of power. The, it looks great. Like it actually runs good. So I pull it onto my lift and I start digging around and I, and I keep getting positively surprised. So it turns out this car has had the rear subframe reinforced, which that's a huge and expensive or labor intensive job that I really wasn't looking forward to doing. It's been done. The entire rear subframe has all new bushings, it has new trailing arm bushings, new, new subframe bushings, new differential bushings. That's a lot of time that I don't have to spend. They replaced the right rear trailing arm with another actual M part and it everything looks great. Now they, the wheel, it needs wheels and tires. So yeah, you kind of expect that kind of stuff. And I start looking around the rest of the car and uh, there's a little oil leak and you know, like the C pillars falling down like normal and the shift knobs kind of worn, but like this is what I'm complaining about. So. I start digging around some more. I start looking at the front end because that's what they said the loss was. I know Stella. And it turns out it has a cracked front bumper support. And uh, well here, I'll just, I'll just show you. So here's the real damage here. As you can see, the front bumper support is broken. The carbon fiber is broken. And there's some stuff that's not quite right here. I'll probably have to put a bumper support and brackets on it, and it may even need a core support, but it's probably not gonna be that bad. Uh, but nothing is really terrible, like it really isn't. It's gonna need a front bumper, and I'm prob probably gonna put a fender on it because that's just ugly. But that should straighten this thing out. I mean, I'm not gonna say that it's just a walk in the park, but it's not terrible. It's, uh, and I, I didn't want some super clean virgin car anyway that I couldn't drive or was scared to take out of the garage. So this thing just looks, just looks great. I mean, it's not perfect. It's a, you know, 2002 BMW and these cars are often driven hard and uh, they're not always owned by the best of people, but it's actually pretty nice. Now this is the corner in question. Um, 
As you can see, nothing seems to fit very well, and the fender makes contact with the door there, and the gap is huge at the bottom, so this corner needs some sorting, but it's it's not bad. Uh, you know, I'm going to put a fender on it. Nothing looks like it's bent up here, so I'm, like, you usually can tell by how things are aligned. It's got, like, a silicone heater hose hit, kit on it, which is nice. Um, again, like, whoever put this car together, they re replaced a bunch of the parts that were missing, uh, and obviously they returned the car to factory, which I would have done anyway, because, well, I, I, I'm, I'm an old man now, so I, I want a factory car. The only thing about this car that I didn't really like, and you can't really tell from the pictures, is that the rear fenders have been rolled. So, they're really thin here. This is not something that I will probably fix, not for a while, but I may be down the road. It's got a couple dings here that you couldn't see in the picture, but it's really not bad. Uh, I just, I got so incredibly lucky, and that's what it was. It was just luck. I mean, the interior's nice. The driver's seat's a little worn, but I mean, it's luck. This just, just there's no other way around it. This is, this is just luck. So one of the things I just can't figure out, why would you run this thing through auction? So the place that bought this had $8,700 in it at Copart and probably a grand to bring it to Atlanta. So they had $9,700 for it and they sold it to me for 93 and it wasn't free to sell it. So uh, the aftermarket parts that took off, maybe a thousand bucks worth. The intake is like the only thing that probably survived without major damage and coilovers are not expensive for these cars and exhaust could be but it looks pretty rough in the picture so like what what gives like what what happened why anyway these are questions that i'll probably never get the answer to and that's okay but it would be nice to know so you might ask well what are your plans for this car so i'm just going to i'm going to fix it i'm going to put a bumper support and bumper support brackets on it and some proper headlights that aren't black housing uh put chrome grills back in it because that's what it was sold with put uh some tires on it a right front fender maybe have some pdr done on it and kind of straighten it up some small interior work fix the oil leaks i'm going to put rod bearings in it because i don't have any maintenance history on this car and enjoy it because these cars are a blast to drive and i wish i could keep my e36 but I already have, I have two, and I'll, now I'm going to have one E36 and one E46, and that's how my brain works. It can rationalize keeping one or multiple of everything. Anyway, this is going to be part one. Next episode on this car is going to be me ripping the front end off and probably uncovering a whole bunch of things that are going to make me curse, but I don't care. Uh, so stay tuned, subscribe, and hopefully you enjoyed the video.